We begin this week with the world's first returnable and reusable satellite. Welsh developer Spaceforge designed the Ford Star Zero craft, making it the first space vehicle imagined and built in Wales. The company says Ford Star Zero will offer in-space manufacturing of so-called super materials. On Earth, we have the atmosphere. It's the thing that allows us to live. But it's incredibly heavy, it's incredibly dense, and kind of as we know from COVID, it's filled with contamination. Now in space, you don't have an atmosphere. What that means is that there are no particles that can make the process that you're trying to achieve dirty. Uh, so in space, everything is much, much cleaner. Making it possible, he says, for future Ford Star missions to autonomously and cleanly manufacture metal alloys, pharmaceuticals, and the next generation of quantum computing chips all in an onboard clean room. Near absolute zero temperatures in space offer an ideal environment to produce quantum computing chips or qubits as on Earth, the process involves special cryogenic refrigerators. Ford Star's maiden mission should launch next month from spaceport Cornwall aboard Virgin Orbit's Launcher 1. In other news, Russia joined a busy week of satellite send-offs with this one from a launch pad in Vostochnoi. It was the country's first satellite launch designed to provide broadband internet and it rode aboard the Russian space agency's new Soyuz-2 family of rockets. India then launched 36 satellites for British startup OneWeb from the Satish Dhawan Space Center. The commercial communication satellites are part of OneWeb's global broadband network. And lift off of Falcon 9. Go Starling, go Falcon. But it was the mother of all global broadband companies leading the charge this week as SpaceX launched another batch of its Starlink satellites into orbit. SpaceX says it was the company's 48th successful mission of the year. Also this week, and against the backdrop of Russia's ongoing war in Ukraine, NASA and Roscosmos partnered to launch Progress 82 to the International Space Station. The craft will deliver nearly three tons of food, fuel and supplies to the orbiting outpost. Finally, the U.S. military tested hypersonic weapons this week from Wallops Island, Virginia. The weapons, which launch from a rocket, glide to targets at about 6,200 kilometers per hour or more than five times the speed of sound. Officials say the gliders work against other countries' countermeasures. Arash Arabasadi, VOA News.